Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, this sermon today is called Becoming You, not Becoming You, Inventing You. I'll explain the title in a minute. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for what what you're about to do today, the lives you're going to change, uh, the people you're going to touch. Let your spirit move upon these, these words like never before. Let people be touched, healed, delivered from what you've shown me and taught me from this um, show, Lord God, I pray that you will just um, talk, talk to a, us all and say something different to us all at the same time. Lord, I know you can do it. Go into every situation and do whatever you need to do. Go into, go into hearts, go into mind, to mind. Go into souls, go into spirits, Lord. Just, just be you. And you are not a God that needs to invent himself. You are just who you are. You were there from the beginning. And you'll be there at our ending, God. We praise you, we bless you. Because we know that the ultimate invention that you created is us and you invented us all beautiful we give you the praise give you the glory speak to me and speak through me mightily today let us never be the same after this time with you in the name of Jesus amen hi guys a few Last week I talked about my COVID story. If you want to see that um, video, just uh, go back a video. It'll it'll be posted below this one. It's worth checking out. Um, so while I was in the rehab center with COVID. All I did was watch Netflix. I watched Greenleaf. I watched Sweet Magnolias. I watched um, The Adam Project and a few other things. But something that I watched caught my attention. It was called Inventing Anna. Which is a story about this reporter, and she finds a story about someone who's embezzled so much money, millions of dollars from the companies. And um, I should say before I go any further that this sermon, um, in the if you're going to watch, if you have Netflix, and you're going to watch Inventing Anna, watch that first. If you don't care and you just want to hear the sermon, go ahead. But if you want to watch Inventing Anna, watch that first. Because this sermon will be a spoil, be a spoiler. Um, if you haven't seen it and want to watch it. Um, so it's about this reporter who finds out about this uh, young girl. She, she says that she's from, I think it was uh, Russia. No, she said that she's Russian and she makes up these bunch of uh, lies, and then and then she she tells 
these big company leaders that she is an entrepreneur and she wants to build uh, this exclusive club. And uh, she ends up embezzling them out of a whole bunch of money. And it and then at the end, they find out that she is not who she says she is. And they find out that she is not, um, she is not Anna Delphi. And her father wasn't uh, a billionaire. Her parents are actually just regular, kind, and wonderful people. But she invented this whole life story, and at the end, uh, she was totally just... She got arrested, and um, she spent her time... She got... She got... Uh, 12 to 20 years in prison and she she served her time in jail. Now, I don't know if this story is a true story or anything, but while I was watching it, while I was watching this story, it struck me, even though the story is, um, Um, just a one person in, in such on a grandiose scale. It struck me how like this person we all are. How we, how some of us want to be liked by others so much, want to be famous, want to be known, um, that we will say anything, do anything, be anything, steal anything. And throughout this movie, she stole so many things. She wanted to be so popular and whatever. She wanted to be famous. But at the end, what did it get her? Uh, what? 12 to, tw to 20 years in jail and I was thinking like was that all worth it everything you everything you uh, went through all the lies backstabbing your friends because this per this Anna person had real friends and real like people that loved her and her parents, but she always, um, growing up, you find out near the end of the show that growing up, she lived in a modest home, um, but she would sit in her room and look at these magazines and want what these people have, like, want the clothes and the fashion and whatever. She wanted that so bad, she wasn't happy with her life. She wasn't happy with her parents. And she did anything she could do to get that. She stole money from one of her best friends. She stole properties. She stole a boat. She, she did all that. And at the end of it all, she, she ended up with 12 to 16. To 20 years in jail. So, as I was watching this, I was like, the one question in my mind was two questions. Why? And was it really worth it? And I began to think of us as a society. How we just we live in a culture that wants more and more and will will do almost anything to get more and more and i 
I'm not saying we should want more for our lives, but I'm saying uh, there's a fine line between um, wanting more and just letting more control you. It's not, it's not a crime to want more for yourself, to want better for yourself and the world and to want to bend yourself with tools for the world. Um, but the problem comes when I think uh, when wanting more and the ambition for more um, starts to control your life like it did with this young woman. Like, the problem with wanting more is the more you get is the more you're not satisfied with. So, if you have $20 in your bank, you want 40 If you want 40 then you, if you have 40, then you want 60, and so on and so on. And if you have a million dollars, you want 2 million. And if you want, to, if you have 2 million dollars, then you want 4 million. It goes on and on and on and on. And it doesn't stop. And as I said before, wanting more is not the problem. The pro, the problem is when you let that wanting more control you. More fame, more prestige, more more false uh, admiration. And um, some of you, especially with social media accounts, are wanting more followers, more this, more that. And you are, are trying to hustle to get uh, this many people to watch your videos and this many people to buy your products and you're, you're constantly posting and posting and posting and driving yourself crazy and, and taking all, all this, all these uh, seminars and buying all these books and education is is cool but the the main thing that you have to ask yourself is number one why are you do why are you doing what you're doing why are you in business why are you selling that makeup why are you looking for approval from people. Why are you wanting everyone to watch your videos? Is it for you or is it for a higher purpose of God's glory? And sometimes even if it is for a higher purpose of God's glory, you can lose yourself in that I need more, I, I want more, I need more, I need everyone to watch this video. And I need everyone to do, to do this thing. And then you get so lost, I need to achieve more, I need to achieve more, that you lose who you are in the process of achieving more. Like, I, I think now so many people lose themselves on Instagram because, or Facebook, or YouTube. So many people use themselves because they want, uh, they want, um, a thousand, they want thousands of people to check out their channel. They want, and they'll do anything to, to make that happen. There is not a day that goes by on social media that I don't see an ad. You've seen them even, even on this website where uh, you, you say, uh, you see, uh, make, make more money. Here's how you can make money from home. Here's how you can do this. Want more and want more and want more. 
And at the end of the day, what is that more for? Even when it comes to uh, the gospel, I've heard uh, several preachers say, and even the person I consider my pastor, I heard him a few weeks ago say, um, there was a time when you, when, when I thought if I couldn't pastor, I wasn't a person. Now, it's great to love your career. It's great to want to preach the gospel. It's great to feel called to feel the gospel. But the problem comes is when your career, whatever it is, becomes all of who you are. Uh, you should you should love your career. You should love uh, preaching the gospel. You should love uh, being in business. You should love what you do. I'm all for that. But never, ever, ever let anything become all of who you are. First, remember that you are a child of God. And then, remember that you are a daughter, you are a sister, you are a mother, you are a family member um, to your family, and you are a friend. In this video, the girl got so uh, consumed with having more, being bigger, being better, that she messed over her friends. She owed her friend, friend $57,062,000 and only gave her back five. At the end of the day, is what you're pursuing worth all of this? And there needs to be a balance with what you're pursuing. You can't be all about this all the time, so much so that you step on people, you use people, you take advantage of people because you want this prize. Because I'm telling you, after you get whatever it is, there'll be something else that you'll want. After you get to whatever goal you want, there'll be something else that you want and you'll never stop. You'll never stop and you'll burn yourself out. And there are so many people that that burn themselves out in the pursuit of more. And I'm not saying that you should want more for yourself. I'm saying that there needs to be a balance between pursuing more and being content and not having it kill you. Uh, pursuing more is great when you have a balance of your family and your friends and, with, and first of all, time with God. So if you are, let's say, a business owner, but you go to school, you you study, you do whatever that business is required to do, but on the side you still make time for your family, for your friends, for your loved ones, for your to relax and smell the roses. Like so many people, um get so get so wrapped up in the pursuit of more when they look around their lives are empty everyone's gone they've gone through two marriages their kids hate them or sometimes their kids don't know them because they've been so such in the pursuit of more that it takes over who they are let me say this, what you do is not who you are. Hear me now, what you do is not who you are. It's a vehicle to affect the world and to give glory to God. 
what you do is not who you are. It's a vehicle that that gives that gives your gift to the world and gives glory to God. Whether that's a pastor, whether that's a, a YouTube speaker like me, whether that's a real estate agent, whether whatever you do, whether that's a mom, whatever you do is supposed to give your gift to the world and give glory to God. And if it's not supposed to take over who you are and whose you are, and it's not supposed to become you, it's, and let me say this, in this movie too, she, this gr woman invented a whole new persona. She, ch she changed her last name. She did all of this. She changed her hair. She changed where she was from. She invented a whole new life and started taking advantage of any, everyone except one person uh, that came across her path. Started stealing money, started lying, started doing all that. Because she thought where she came from and who she was, was not enough. And we, we, as Brene Brown said, we constantly live in the space of not enough. I'm not enough of this. I'm not enough of that. I'm not a good enough preacher. Or I'm not a good enough uh, mom. Or I'm not a good enough business owner. Or I'm not a good enough thing. And the Lord wants me to tell you, whatever age and stage you are, that is enough for now. You are, you are enough. You are enough and your gifts, your talents, and how you work them is enough. He says, instead of trying to be like this and to look all perfect, why don't you just celebrate who you are and who he's created you to be instead of trying to look all per perfect? Um, the world celebrates like fake perfe perfection, but the Lord wants you to, to know that fake perfection will only drive you crazy. But real vulnerability and real um, admitting your humanness and the fact that you're human and the fact that you don't have to invent yourself, that will draw people to you. All, all the filters you're putting on your family, all the uh, pictures with filters you're putting up, the Lord says, be you. You are enough. You are enough. And in the in the knowledge that whatever you are, whoever you are, wherever you come from, is enough. Walk in that. And if and if the people that you're hanging around with um, are not say say that you have to wear these kind of clothes, you have to. Have, um, this car, you have to do this. They're not real friends. They're fake friends. And examine your, examine your inner circle. Because eventually you'll become who you hang around. And whoever you are, whoever he's made you to be, is enough. It's beyond enough. 
because your talents and your gifts are the ones that God has given you to go along your journey. You can't have somebody's talents and somebody's gifts. And under the sound of my voice, there are people who are constantly feeling that their talent and their gift and what they do is not enough, that that per another person is better uh, equipped. No, they're not better equipped. They're just differently equipped. Um, s someone that I've heard of um, said one time, uh, they're their husband was talking about them and uh, he said that that she always feels like she's not a good enough speaker and that she's not, not anointed enough or whatever and as I begin to think of that person I said no it's not that she's not anointed it's just that she's differently anointed. See, we, we often um, like to compare ourselves and we like to copy the, this person and that person. Um, but we ignore the uniqueness about ourselves. And it's not that you're better or worse, it's just that you are, you are differently anointed. And if you would embrace your differences, uh, you would just be so amazing. And you know, you are already amazing, but you would be even more amazing if you would stop trying to copy this person and that person and embrace the uniqueness of who you are and embrace the difference of who you are. Um, I was thinking the other day of, of what I would say to someone um, who, who was young and just looking for a career. What I would say is whatever field you're going into, this is for like high school students then, I would say whatever field you're going into, mix what the people before did with what you do to create something wonderful. So, to, for example, if you are a musician, um, study other musicians that, that do kind of your same thing see what they do, not to copy them, but to add to what you do, add it to what you already do, and create something new. See, I've heard somebody say, you have to copy for a while until you can find your feet. Well, I would say, I would slightly disagree with that person and say, you can study other people. You can you could you could uh, learn from other people, and then add to add to add what they do to what you do to create something unique. So you don't copy them. You study them. You you study your craft, and then add what they do, uh, a bit of what they do, to what you do to create something new and something that will uh, change the world in a positive way. You don't have to invent anything. You're already good enough the way God has made you to, to be. What what um what needs to happen is you you add to what you see and then you create 
out of what they do with what you do, you create something uh, uniquely you and walk in that. And don't be afraid to be uniquely yourself. What I always say is there is somebody out there who will respond to what you do. Like, what I don't like about uh, record companies is they try and make everybody the same or, you know, publishing companies or whatever. They try and say, no, this won't sell, that won't sell, this person won't do this, this, there's no way to market this. But what they don't understand is that, that there's someone for everyone. There's someone for everyone. There's a style of music for everyone. There's a style of preaching for everyone. There's a style of something especially creative for everyone so who are they these creative people publishers and music people to say this won't sell that won't sell yes it will it will it will there i may not respond to it but somebody out there will And it could affect their lives. And, you know, we always, uh, as a society, go for the millions of people. But if what you do affects one life, you've made all the difference in the world. So don't do whatever it is just for a lot of people. It may affect a lot of people, and it may not. Do it for the one person that can be saved, that can be helped, that can be used, that can be, that you can, that God can use you to change. By His Word. And I, I don't, I don't believe you have to invent anything. I, I think that you, that you have to be uniquely you and ask the Lord to make you comfortable with you and walk in your own uniqueness. So guys, I will see you later. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Bye. Here I am, all alone in my room, and I can't. Stop thinking of you, your grace and your mercy, and how you love me. And time and again, you cause me to see the amazing part of me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and to give me life is the reason you came. I can finally look at myself and be truly amazed, amazed, amazed. There are days when I don't like what I see in the mirror looking at me. But on those days I think to myself that your greatest wish is my prosperity and health because of this I see the amazing part of me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made and to give me life is the reason you came. I can finally look at myself and be truly amazed, 
amazed, amazed. You see to everybody of me, and you still count me as royalty. Amazed, amazed, amazed. You don't need to invent anything. You're already amazing with the way you are. Your hair is amazing. Your eyes are amazing. Everything about you is amazing. And the thing, the thing about you is, um, even those things that you need to work on, even those imperfections that you see inside yourself, God is going to use them for an amazing purpose. All things are working together for your good. Because you love the Lord and are the called according to His purpose, not yours. You don't need to invent everything, anything about yourself. He's created the perfect, the perfect imperfect you. So it's your perfect and imperfect you. But my question is, who decides what's perfect and what's imperfect? Is it you or is it him? Go with what he says, because he created you. And let that be your mantra. Let that be the way you measure yourself. Because the, the world's version of, in, of perfect and imperfection changes. The world's version of normal and what's normal and what's in and not in changes. But his word about you never changes. He will never change his mind about you. He will never stop loving you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Take his word about you, not the world, word of the world, and not the world of pe word of people. Um, take his word about you. Not that you should listen to the godly, godly counsel of people, because the Lord says, in a multitude of counselors there is safety, but don't let that be your barometer. Let people come in and add to what God says. But first, your base about yourself needs to be what God says. And then you let people come to add to, add to that, to add his word and his life and his light to what you see about yourself. And if you guys want to know what that song was, I actually wrote it a few years ago uh, for a musical uh, called Inseparable. The musical hasn't been put on yet, but one of these days it will be put on. The song is called Amazed. So... So, so guys, I will see you later. Take care. Bye.